Okay, so we'll start off our afternoon with a little joke on recursion. Open up a tab if you have a computer handy and type in recursion into the Google prompt and see what Google says. So do you see what it says? You can see I typed it in correctly and then it spit out the exact same spelling over here. That's a little... Google's filled with programmers, so that's their little joke here. Normally it says this when you mistype the word, but here it says it needs to be typed it correctly. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go on to look at this packet that I gave out before lunch. Um, I mentioned to you, I don't know who put these pack this packet out on the internet. There's no affiliation for school or professor, but I've been using these notes for several years, and they're good ones. We're going to talk this afternoon about how to do well on the recursion part of the APCSA exam. And to do well, you have to be able to read people's recursion. That's the key skill that we need to develop here in the next couple of weeks. OK, we're going to start off on page three, which I hopefully counted correctly, is this page right here. And you can see that there is a simple recursive definition of the factorial problem right here and as i mentioned to you before <clears throat> this is called the the static view where we're just looking at the method without writing anything on top of it and the static view is useful for us to read initially but doesn't really tell us what any particular input is going to produce so to do that we need to draw a dynamic view the dynamic view also has two other synonyms that basically mean the same thing. It also refers to the activation sequence or the program stack. So best, this is best described by an example. And if you look at here, let's see, page four, page five, looks at page six. Here is one person's interpretation or way that they draw the program stack. And you can see here that they're drawing these little bubbles and they're calculating factorial of four. And they're saying that launch is another factorial. That this part right here says return four plus factorial of three. That's basically this line of code right here. You can see it's four times the factorial of three. Four times the factorial of three. And then that will launch factorial of three, which will launch factorial of two, which will launch factorial of one. Factorial of one will hit the base case, so it will return a one. We will then plug in the one in here for this part right here. We'll multiply by two, we'll return a two. And so these arrows that are going upwards now are showing the reverse activation chain or program stack. This is on the way back. So this is the way into the stack. This is the way out of the stack. And so when we finally return, the final answer will be 24. If you want this long-winded way of writing it, that's perfectly OK. I probably wouldn't want to waste quite this much time on drawing all these circles and the like. So you might want to come up with some shorter cut way of drawing these sequences. So we're going to look at this first set of exercises here. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's on page uh, main. There it is. OK. So this is our mystery problem main. And what we have to do is we have to figure out uh, what's happening here for, uh, do they, oh, okay. So here's the, here's the test code. You can see that they're gonna call it with the number 10 here, and then they're gonna launch this, the, the, the call to the recursive method right here. And so initially you're gonna put a 10 in here, and then you're gonna trace through the code. And each time you get to a mystery, you have to draw the activation chain by drawing some sort of arrow, whatever. So I'll just kind of show you how I do it, but I want to stress that this has to be sort of your idea of what to do here. So what I do here is basically, I'm just going to draw a little arrow that describes what mystery does. So first time through mystery is being called with the number 10. And then what's going to happen is next time it's going to launch another mystery with the number eight. You notice I don't even draw the full name mystery here because every second is valuable on the AP exam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to short, shorten it to just M, and then I'm going to call it M of 8. Now, M of 8, I'm going to trace through the code, and I see it's going to skip over the base case and get to the recursive case. And that's going to launch a mystery of 6. That'll launch a mystery of 4. That'll launch a mystery of 2. 
And so now I'm going to draw the call stack on the way back as the return values are being filled in. And that's going to allow me to generate the final answer. A lot of kids put 11. And so you want to make sure that your call tracing strategy, whether it's this one or your own, whatever you develop, make sure it gets you to the right answer of 13 and not 11. If you've got 11, try to figure out what you need to correct in your tracing ability. Now I'm going to ask you to move on to the second one, which is just below it, which is we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to call it initially with the number one. Once you're done with number two, please move on now with number three, which you can see is much more difficult. Okay, look up here. I'm going to make one final set of remarks, and then you're going to work by yourselves for the remaining 40 minutes. We're going to do two large exercises today to finish up the period. The first set of exercises is on page 11, and it's marked recursion worksheet number two. And here, these are exactly the same level of difficulty as the AP exam. And so these are going to be good representative problems for you to practice for your quiz on Friday, as well as for the actual AP test. I mentioned to you also that even though you're only going to be asked to read recursion problems on the AP, it's good to write some also to get some additional practice. So once you're done with this recursion worksheet, the other page that we're going to do today is page 13. Oh, actually, this, this page right here, by the way, goes on to the next page. So there's a few more problems here. And then if you look at page 13 here, they're going to ask you to write some recursive methods. They're relatively simple and they will give you some more practice on recursion. Okay, look up here for a second. I've gotten a couple of questions on uh, question D here, which is on page 11. And you'll notice that this mystery four is being called with the number four. And uh, since uh, uh, it, it's going to get called right here with um, uh, three here. Now, you notice that the mystery four method doesn't actually return anything because it's got a void return type. So it's going to go through here, and it's going to recurse at 3, and then it'll go through and keep recursing at 2, at 1, at 0. But it's important to understand that as after you get down all the way through the stack, when it comes back, execution will continue from this semicolon onward. And so the rest of this code will eventually execute for each of the returns that are made. And so part of what you're doing here is practicing. Now, why is this so much harder to understand? What's different about it versus the other ones you've done mostly? Yes, this is non-tail recursive, and this is precisely why humans have such trouble with non-tail recursive algorithms. So if you want to know exactly what's happening here, you can try and trace this out. If you really can't get it, I strongly urge you to go home today, type this into BlueJ, put a breakpoint here, and walk through the call stack. You'll be able to step through and see like you'll get the recursive calls, you go all the way down the stack, and then as each one returns, it'll return to the previous stack at the semicolon and will execute all these loops, and then the next one will return, and the next one. So do not walk away thinking that this code here, that's shown here, will never run. It will run. You just have to figure out when it will run. Okay, I just need your attention for about four minutes now. So in in this this problem, which is called the Towers of Hanoi, is the most famous recursion problem in computer science. And it's a simple problem. It's a child's game. And what you have to do is you have to take these rings and you have to move them from this peg over to this peg. And the general rule is that you can take the top ring off and put it on either peg, but you cannot put a larger ring on top of a smaller ring. So it turns out that this can be solved using recursion. And in previous years, I've attempted to try to teach this and to try to get students to do it. But repeatedly, it's proven just too difficult for high school students. I've heard stories that if you major in computer science, that this will be the first recursion problem that you do in college. So I'm going to show you how this works, how the solution works. It's a two minute video. And I want you to see how incredibly simple it is. But if you fancy yourself a challenge for this evening, please feel free to take a whack at it. <laughs> 